Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the last video we did the MPU6050 module, which was the accelerator and the gyroscope. So now we're moving on to the HC SR50 PR, PIR sensor, which uh, again, <laughs> I have no idea what these names mean. So yeah, I didn't name them. Lesson 16, I don't even know what the sensor is. Let's see. So in this lesson you will learn how to use a PIR movement detector. Okay, so it's like one of those light bulb sensor things. The Uno is the heart of this project. It Okay, it's always the heart of the project, I'm sure. It listens to the PIR sensor, and when motion is detected, instructs the LED to light on or shut off. Okay, so when motion is detected, this, then the LED will turn on or off. So it's just the Uno, the sensor, and then three female to male wires. So the PIR sensor are more complicated than many of other sensors explained in the tutorial uh, because they there are multiple variables that affect the sensor's input and output. The PIR sensor itself has two slots. Each slot is made of special material that is sensitive to infrared light. The lens used here is not really doing much, and so we will see that the two slots can see out past some distance, basically the sensitivity of the sensor. Uh, okay. When the sensor is idle, both slots detect the same amount of infrared light. Ah, uh, okay, got it. The ambient amount radiated from the room or walls or outdoors when a warm body like a human or animal passes by, it first intercepts one half of the PIR sensor, which causes the which causes a positive differential change between the two halves, creates a voltage. When the warm body leaves the sensing area, the reverse happens, whereby the sensor generates a negative differential volt differential change. These changes pulse these changes these change pulses are what is detected. That's very actually very clever. I completely get that. Okay. The SR501 will detect infrared changes and if interpreted as motion will set its output low. What is or is not interpreted as motion is largely dependent on user settings and adjustments. The device requires nearly a minute to initialize. During this period, it can and often will output false detection signals. Circuit or controller logic needs to be needs to take this initialization period into consideration. You have to wait a minute, okay. PIR sensitivity adjustment, as mentioned, adjustable range is from approximately three. Okay, we read that. Um, okay, that's fine. Blah blah blah. Okay, wait, maybe three seconds off after time delay completes. Important. The output of this device will go low or off for approximately three seconds after the time delay completes. In other words, all motion detection is blocked during this three second period. Imagine if you're in the single trigger mode and your time delay is set to 5 seconds. The PRI will detect motion and set it high for 5 seconds. After 5 seconds, the PRI, PRI I'll say that, those three letters, PIR, will set its output low for about 3 seconds. During the 3 seconds, the PIR will not detect motion. Or I'm not understanding this. What's it talking about? Ugh, I suppose I'm going to have to understand this. So it says, imagine you're in a single trigger mode. I mean, what's the single trigger mode? That hasn't been mentioned previously. So three seconds off after time delay completes. Important, the output of this device will go low for approximately three seconds after the time delay completes. In other words, all motion is blocked during this three second period. Imagine you're the, in the single trigger mode and your time delay is set to five seconds. The PIR will detect the motion and set it high for five seconds. After five seconds, the PIR will set its output low for about three seconds. So it goes high for f five seconds because it's detected motion. Then it goes low for three seconds. And during that three seconds, it can't detect uh, movement. Okay. After three seconds, the PIR will detect motion again and set the motion once again to the output high. All right, got it. That's fine. The trigger mode selection jumper allows you to select between single and repeatable triggers. The effect of this jumper setting is to determine when the time delay begins. A single trigger mode, the time delay begins immediately when motion is first detected. Uh, okay. Each detected motion resets the time delay for the repeatable trigger. Each detected motion resets the time delay. Thus, the time delay begins with the last motion detected. Okay, so we've got a dance floor application example. Ugh. I mean, these tutorials, the the wordy logic part of it sucks. I'm not a fan of them at all. So 5 volts at pin 1, D7, digital pin 7 at, at pin 2. And then we've got, so that's input, output, so VCC. Then we've got VSS, which is going to ground. And we've got NC, which is just left floating. 
Here, connecting PI sensors to a microcontroller is really simple. The PI are acts as a digital output. So all you need to do is listen for the pin to flip high. It's likely that you want retrigging, so be sure to put the jumper in the H position. The jumper in the H position. Power the PI with five volts and connect ground to ground. Then connect the output to a digital pin. In this example, you will use pin seven. And then it just says to upload the code. I don't know what it means by putting the jumper into H position, but anyways, let's just open our code or let's actually build our circuit first. So it's just three simple wires. We've got VCC going to five volts. We've got input output going to digital seven and then VSS going to ground. Okay, so I should be able to find this sensor a lot easier. There it is. I usually struggle a lot to get these sensors. So it's this one with the multiple, the four capacitors. And it's dodgy ball. I won't need the breadboard. And then it's uh, three female wires. They're holding it like that. With the three dots up there at the top. Okay, so that's how I know what it is. And then so the middle one is going to pin seven. The bottom one is going to VCC and the top one's going to ground. Cool. Let's get out of wires. Okay, so nice and simple. So VCC is the bottom one. And then we've got our digital pin in the middle. And we've got our ground at the top. There you go. So connect to ground. Uh, VCC to five volts and VSS, I believe it is to pin seven. There we go. So I assume we're just going to be causing the LED on board the Arduino to illuminate. Okay, so let's open up our code. So no, li no libraries or anything to install this time. All right, and then hit upload. Okay, so that upload worked, and then I've now yes, yeah, so I'm sitting very still, about six seven. 10 seconds passed, didn't detect it once. Moving my hands now. Okay, there you go. All right, so let's take a look at this code. So we're declaring some variables for our pin numbers. Then we're setting our pins to uh, LED pin and peer pin, pin. So 13 and seven. We're setting 13 to our output. So pin 13 is the LED apparently. I don't know how that works because there is a pin 13 there, so. I don't know, LED on pin 13 of Arduino, okay. And then input pin seven, uh, pin seven, yeah, that's this one, digital seven. We're setting up the pins and then we're writing digital right LED pin low. So we're turning this LED off basically at, at the start of the program. Then what we're saying here is that we're taking this variable PIR value and we're getting the value of PIR pin into it, which is from this. So we're reading this, is this high or low? This digital pin seven. Is this digital pin high or low, right? And then we're saying digital right, LED pin. Then if it is, then make the LED that value of this, if it's high or low. So if I wanted to just turn on this LED and just leave it on all the time. Could I just do this? Yeah, so you can see the LED just stays on. That's cool. Okay, so that's how you get the LED to stay on. And we, let's just, I just want to print out the value of PIR. Okay, so serial print, and then we're going to print the value of PIR value. Upload. Open our serial monitor. And so I'm just expecting a whole bunch of printing. Okay, nothing right now. So I'm moving currently moving right by the sensor. The sent the LED turned on there. But it didn't print anything. PIR value. So the digital read, it's reading the PIR value, the pin, and I put it into there. So will PIR pin work? I mean, if PIR pin works, then yeah, PIR value should be the same. Okay, so no printing. I think okay. I think it's because I haven't set up the the serial monitor. So if you have a look at setups here, we've got serial.begin, which um one guy in the comments, Jordan, he did mention that I should take more time to try and understand all parts of the code. And I agree with that because 
you know like this is something that i looked into what does the serial dot begin do and now i'm pretty sure this this should work now so let's do um let's do value go back to normal so now we're initializing the serial monitor we hit upload and then open the serial monitor it should be printing the value there you go zero 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 one 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 zero 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 so let's do it on a new line. I need a shortcut to duplicate lines. Okay, so serial print, and then we're gonna say, print a new line. And then we're also gonna say, do it every, wait one second, there you go. Now we should be able to see it on a new line, then be waiting one second as well. Open our serial monitor. So the value is one, one, zero, so now I'm just going to move my hands right next to the sensor the whole time. Then zero, one. I don't know if my lights are, my lights are affecting it because I know it's like infrared light only. Let me just turn off my lights. We've got a one, we've got a one. We're not getting any more than two ones in a row. My plan with these tutorials is basically finish them, the basic tutorials that they give us, because I'm hoping that, you know, you've got, if you go up into the folders, they've got these um, multi-module combination courses and expanding content creation. So I'm hoping that some of those will dig deeper into these code because it's a real big shame that they don't place any explanation of the code there. It really is. So me looking at this uh, value, of it just printing zeros. I don't, I'm not sure how to go about with this. So for example, like I know some code I could do would be this, right? It'd be PRI value. So if PRI value is greater than zero, then we know that we could put serial.print attention intruder. All right, so we could do that. I mean, it was only printing ones, but that was of a delay of one second. So that might have affected things. Or well, that definitely would have affected things. Now I've got intention intruder. So there you go, attention intruder. Then it should just carry on because it's got that three second delay. Okay, let's just add a new line there. And let's also add a delay 100 milliseconds. Just I have something there slowing it down a bit. Okay. So I'm going to try and sit still. Okay, so it's just constantly printing attention intruder. All right, let's um, maybe do else, right? else zero print and then we'll do the same but we'll say all good we're on two new lines yeah what we're saying now is that if it detects motion then say attention intruder otherwise just print out all good so it's currently printing out all good, all good, all good. Then I moved, intention intruder, and then all good again. So I'm just going to try and just not move now for the next 30 seconds, and hopefully I shouldn't get anything. So it's just saying all good. This is actually super accurate. Okay. Kind of, I raised my voice there. Okay, that didn't work. Mm, all good. All right, I'm going to lift my hand up. Look at that. That's very quick. I'll do it on camera so you can see. So. I'll put my hand here. Let's notice I'm an intruder. Now, as I lift my hand up, it will literally just boom straight away. Very accurate. Yes, that's quite cool. That's quite good, actually. You know, you could use that easy to trigger your lights because I suppose you don't need the sensor. The sensor just needs to detect someone once, right? And then you can just switch on all your security lights around your house. You know, sensor, detect someone, switch noise security lights, and then, um, you know, send your text message to say, 
for that attention intruder. Yeah, so, I mean, although I'm not happy with this tutorial in the sense that, you know, I wish I could have learned more about it. But at the same time, you know, this is looking at this, what I've got here now, this is usable code to me. I could actually do a fair bit with this. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. If you guys are enjoying these videos, leave a like. I'm definitely enjoying doing them myself. So hopefully you guys can benefit from it as well. And if you do know more than me about this stuff, please leave a comment below. It helps me out. Trust me, I'm super lost in most of this stuff. So yeah, anything, any nice comments or any advice you can leave in the comment section, I appreciate it. And don't forget to leave a like. See you soon.